We all may love Mary Poppins, but it turns out her decades old advice of adding a spoonful of sugar may not be the best. In fact, it's definitely not. Too much sugar can lead to obesity, and with it, non-communicable diseases like diabetes, cancers, and heart disease. These are the leading causes of mortality worldwide, but are especially prevalent in low and middle income countries where over 80% of these premature deaths occur. Sugary drinks are often cheaper than water in such countries and can be easier to access too. For example, a Coca-Cola costs just seven cents a cup in India. More and more countries are introducing so-called sin taxes, a bumping up of the price of goods that could be harmful. So things like alcohol, tobacco, salt, and of course, sugar. The World Health Organization includes such taxes in its Best Buys, a list of the most successful, cost-effective public health interventions. The WHO claims a tax of 20% on sugary drinks is enough to reduce sales and consumption, and with it, obesity. But is disease prevention really that simple? So far, 28 countries have introduced a sugar tax. Norway, the first to do so back in 1922, recently increased theirs to a whopping 83%. Barbados, the United Arab Emirates, Samoa and Chile are all others that have followed suit. There's one country though that stands out for both its impressive levels of soft drink consumption and subsequent efforts to tackle this. The traditional Mexican diet is made up of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, pulses and spices. Not exactly what you would call unhealthy. That is until the 1980s when Mexico began lifting tariffs and allowing more foreign investment into the country. With the introduction of the North American Free Trade Agreement in 1994, the availability of fizzy drinks and junk food in Mexico skyrocketed, and so did rates of obesity. By 2012, 70% of Mexican adults and 30% of Mexican children were overweight or obese. An average Mexican drank 163 liters of sugar-sweetened drinks a year. The government finally decided they needed to do something about the country's spiraling health problems and despite fierce opposition from the soft drinks industry, introduced a tax on sugary drinks and junk food which came into effect in 2014. Studies show it's made a huge difference in just a short period of time. By the end of the first year, sales of sugary drinks had dropped by 17% among lower income people. It's too early to say definitively whether Mexico's sugar tax will actually lead to a drop in obesity, diabetes and other NCDs, but the tax is considered cost-effective. One study from China found that a tax on sugary drinks of around 16 cents per litre could generate an estimated $11.8 billion in revenues. This is money that could be used to improve healthcare systems and tackle NCDs, but critics argue the tax disproportionately impacts the poor, who tend to consume more sugary drinks. Others say the tax alone isn't enough to generate behavior change. Just because one item is taxed, that's not to say people won't go looking for other sugary items as a substitute. We need to put in place this together with other uh, interventions. Physician counseling in primary care, really uh, targeting those individuals which are at risk of being obese, or there can be a compulsory food labeling. Fiscal policies by themselves will not really achieve much. Others argue that it's more impactful to work with businesses by providing them with incentives to fix the global food system through subsidies or voluntary agreements. Spain is already doing just that. The health ministry is partnering with more than 500 companies in a bid to reduce salt, sugar and fat levels in more than 3,500 products by 2020. Only time will tell what difference this will make, but some people are skeptical it will have an effect when it comes to sugar levels and obesity. Actually, agreements, they work more in the field of salt. For sugar, I don't think it works, and I think that the use of taxation is actually much better. So, is this in tax just a quick fix, or does it have the ability to overhaul NCDs? Have your say.